Hello everyone, welcome to our worship for today. Brought to you once again from the Vicarage Sala Chapel, which is your chapel and mine in this time where we can't have our normal services in a church building. This first Sunday after Trinity, our first Sunday in ordinary time. And so welcome to the service. I hope you enjoy it. And I hope you enjoy all the other vlogs on our Fenny Church's YouTube video channel as well. Just a word before we start the service about the Worship at Home packs If you um, that are available, uh, I can get Worship at Home packs for each Sunday to anyone who's not able to access these uh, video uh, services. So if you know anyone who would value having one of those, please just let me know any way possible uh, and I'll ensure that they do receive them. So, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us therefore confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. And Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. and readings for the first Sunday after Trinity. O God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers, and because through the weakness of our mortal nature we can do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace, that in the keeping of your commandments we may please you both in will and deed, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel is taken from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 9, beginning to read from verse 35. The glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits cast them out, and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. 
First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother, Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother, John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon, the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instruction, Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. On this first Sunday after Trinity, the first Sunday of ordinary time, the first thing that strikes us is that this time isn't very ordinary and they're living through extraordinary times. But even in this time when regular uh, worship and occasional offices are, uh, have been disrupted, I hope that um, in this way and others, we can keep our faith as part of our ordinary life, just as uh, ordinary as having your breakfast or doing the hoovering or something like that, that our faith is part of us, however we express it, whether that's how we ordinarily do it or whether we um, do so in ways that are less than ordinary. And as we live out our faith, we are conscious also of this story that Jesus told, that we as part of the church are part of the labourers sent out into the harvest. And there's a couple of things to think about uh, from this story as we think of ourselves as sharing in that task of being sent by Jesus. First and foremost, the ministry is Jesus' ministry. We're sharing in his ministry. It's not something we've dreamt up ourselves. It's something that as the church we have been given to do, to bring uh, God's love into all the world. I, I, I only understand it as, simple as, as simply as that. Now that can take many different forms, obviously. But first and foremost, the ministry is Jesus' ministry. And we are called to the privilege of sharing in that ministry. And that's the second thing, called. It's not something that we've kind of um, set ourselves up for or put ourselves forward in. We are being called by Jesus to do something in his name as we share in that privilege of sharing in his ministry. But that calling means that the, it, the, the actual ministry itself and our part in it comes from outside of us. There's something about ourselves which is called to a particular ministry, but that, that calling comes from outside of us. And that, that's right because it's not the case there that I, if I think something is right, then it is right because I think it is and I say it is. It, it, it needs to be tested and measured against the whole church and with the whole church so that the calling is something which is given to us. And it's given to us as, as a task to do. So you think of all the, that summary of the teaching, the teaching, um, proclaiming the good news, healing the sick, and there are many more parts that, that we can think of in our own lives, our own times, of tasks that we're called to do. And Jesus, just as Jesus in Matthew's Gospel, sends those disciples just to um, the, the uh, kind of orthodox Jewish part of Israel, not the Samaritans, uh, not those Gentile areas, but he gives them a specific task to do. So central, this is the central point. Jesus gives us a specific task to do. He doesn't expect us to be superhumans, superwomen or supermen. He, I think, identifies something about ourselves, who we are, our gifts and talents, and gives us that task to do. And there could be a process of discernment, how we arrive at an understanding of what God's called us to do. And I've met many Christians who've been more than surprised, more than uh, a little shocked. And as it dawned on them, they realised that the reason they didn't realise it first of all is because they would have run 100 miles 
if they didn't know what it was God was calling them to do. Because that is right, that it's a challenge. It can take us outside our comfort zone. But we can discover more gifts and talents that we have that we never knew we had by responding to God's gracious but challenging call to ourselves. Which links into what Jesus says about having compassion. Compassion for all the, the crowds who are crying out for spiritual uh, feeding and spiritual uh, and nourishment. That that compassion costs something. The literal translation of that word compassion is gut-wrenching. Gut I never knew that until I uh, looked into this reading today. Gut-wrenching. So that task that Jesus gives us to do costs something of ourselves as well, but can be the most rewarding thing um, that, that we can think of because it comes from outside of us. That gut-wrenching, compassionate task to give each one of us a share in Jesus' ministry to do one thing well rather than try and do everything half-heartedly or, or run around uh, like, uh, but, like, but in that, that, that gut-wrenching, compassionate, challenging task that each one of us is called to discern for ourselves. If we ask, if we think about how we can possibly do that, it's through, as the reading said, it's through faith in Jesus who gives us that task, who gives us that calling. And faith, we think about faith yesterday, faith is a, a, a trusting in, in God, just as the uh, collect said um, a few moments ago, that uh, God, the strength of those who put their trust in you. So it's, it's through God's strength that we can find uh, 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 the way to, to fulfil that, that calling, that challenging task. We can do no good thing without you. That faith, uh, I uh, have for a long time thought of a marvellous illustration by C.S. Lewis that says, faith and trusting in God, something like Collect says as well, or trust in God, it's a bit like learning to dive, okay? Learning to dive into a pool of water, which some people can do and some people can't. But when you learn to dive or jump in, you have to let yourself go. It, there comes a moment where you just have to trust that that water is going to safely receive you. Uh, and there's nothing you can do to stop yourself. Learning to dive is learning to let go and put our trust, learning to put our trust in God. But then, a, a, a couple of years ago or so, I thought some more about this. And I thought that the reason why I like this uh, illustration, it's because, quite honestly, I'm blowing my trumpet, trump here, just some people are good at some things and some people are good at others. I've always been quite a good swimmer. I've always been quite a strong swimmer. And diving in to the pool of water, a swimming pool, not so much as not being a challenge to me, as being something I enjoy, as being something that I like to do. So maybe for me, the challenge would be to dive from a very high diving board, from a great height, which um, I confess I really don't like great heights or, or drops like that. So for me, God might be saying, okay, when you find that bit of diving easy, you've got to go right up there and learn to trust in me by launching yourself up something much higher, much higher than that. So that's a challenge for me, really. What it is we're called to do, is something that we can discern and we can grow and, and discover for ourselves. But whatever it is, we're sharing in the privilege of being called to that ministry, which is Jesus's ministry, and he entrusts a part of to us. Amen. So let us affirm our faith in the words of our creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, 
was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord our God, for you have called us into life to love you. You have called us to proclaim your love and power in all the world. Lord, send us out in the power of your Spirit, that we may show your love in all the world and show your abiding presence as Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And so, Lord, we ask your blessing upon your Church that we may show signs of being one in you, holy and dedicated to being apostolic as we reach out to all people. We pray for all who are reaching out to others in your name and in love. Bless and guide all who preach the word and all who share in your healing ministry. We remember those involved in a pastoral ministry and those who work to relieve distress and sorrow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are called to govern and all who influence the minds of others. We pray for leaders of industry at this time, those called to work in this global pandemic. Help us, O oh Lord, to show care for individuals and care for the whole earth in all that we say and all that we do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, O Lord, because you show us your love through those who love us. And we ask your blessing upon our homes and our loved ones. We pray for homes where there is stress or distress. We remember all who find it difficult to cope, all of us who are seeking to help those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for all involved in healing ministry. And we ask your blessing upon doctors and nurses and all in the emergency services. We pray for those who are good neighbours and carers in their local community. And we remember those, especially at this time, who are frustrated through illness or inability or who are struggling with life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we rejoice in the fellowship of all your saints in all who have heard your call and done your will. We ask your blessing upon all our loved ones departed, and that we also may share in the joy of your love and your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you.
Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty. For everything in heaven and earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning, and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great High Priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your Spirit. Inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. 
Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
Thank you very much everyone for sharing in this service today. I do hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you enjoy all the other vlogs on our Fenny Church's YouTube channel. Don't forget to uh, check out the Vicar David 60 Second Spots and you might also enjoy watching the Confirmation Class lesson which is also posted uh, on the site. If you're able to, remember to give it lots of likes, big thumbs up and also to subscribe to the Fenny Church's channel and get as many people as you can to do that as well. That boosts our presence on the internet, makes us easier to find and uh, makes us stronger as a, as a worshipping community online at this time. So thank you for watching. Uh, until tomorrow's vlog, take care and keep safe and God bless.